Hi folks, Will from Craft Music here today with the Mother32 and Workstot synthesizers from Moog. We're going to spend a little bit of time exploring the possibilities that are opened up by using the two instruments together in a modular fashion. For great deals on Moog instruments, check out our bundles at craftmusic.com or get in touch with us if you want to create a custom bundle to perfectly suit your needs. Before we really dive in, let's spend a little bit of time introducing the pieces we're actually going to be using today. First up, we have the Mother 32. This synth represents Moog's return to modular and their first foray into Eurorack, which is the format that's currently the most widely used in the realm of analog modular synthesizers. The Mother 32 is essentially a complete mono synth voice with the signal flow normaled so that without anything plugged into it, you have a really useful versatile synth that's kind of in line with the Model D, the synth that swept the nation when Moog introduced it and really kind of changed the way that people thought about synthesizers, bringing tools that were actually useful to a musician to the forefront. The nice thing about the Mother 32 is that the different building blocks of an analog synthesizer voice are available to be used on their own or in novel combinations via the patch panel that we see right here, 32 patch points. The other thing that makes this a really special instrument is the sequencer section that you see on the bottom. The 32-step sequencer gives you the ability to animate the sound and really kind of have like a self-contained expressive musical instrument. And so that's really what we're going to focus on today. For more information on the Mother 32, I highly recommend that you check out my colleague John's video where he goes over all of the different features in depth. You can really learn a lot from that. So talking about the workstat, this is more or less the progenitor of the Mother 32. It was introduced uh, during the 2014 Moog Fest as a way of basically bringing Moog's classic synthesizer circuits to both people who are getting their feet wet in analog synthesis and also the tinkers, the DIY-minded type. So Moog actually offers a lot of resources on how you can do different modifications to the workstat or use it as a teaching tool in the STEM classroom. So we're not going to go over that today, but just know that that's one of the possibilities inherent in this. Talking a little bit about the product itself, we have all of the basic building blocks of an analog synthesizer here. We have the VCO, we have the VCF, we have have modulation with the LFO and the envelope, and we even have a little mini key bed right here, as well as a VCA. So these different things we'll talk more about in detail later, but just know that you can also access those via the CV expander here, which is a separate product sold by Moog, and that is really going to allow us to combine these building blocks together in the two synths to create some complex, interesting patches we wouldn't be able to achieve with one instrument alone. Now, in order to show this all off, I'm going to put together a composition here using Ableton essentially as a multi-track tape recorder. Its role is going to be very limited. We're going to route the audio through an interface. In this case, it's going to be Keith McMillan's K-Mix. And then Ableton will be the MIDI master for the sequencer on the Mother 32. So Ableton is more or less staying out of the way, but it's recording clips and then allowing us to play those back in sync with the Mother 32 sequencer. I'm going to be using the sequencer on the Mother 32 to actually write all my parts. So we'll be able to get a good sense of what you can do as far as actually composing music with this instrument. So without any further ado, let's dive in and see what we can put together. So we're going to start with more or less a blank slate. You'll see that there are no patch cables connected. And so this will show us what the default signal routing or the normal signal path of the synthesizer is. I'm going to create a basic pattern and then we'll start riffing off of that. Now, one of the easiest ways to input a pattern is in the keyboard record mode. So we can make sure that the pattern we've selected is initialized by holding reset accent, shift, and pattern right here. And then we hold shift and press record stop to enter pattern record mode. Now, in this mode, as I enter notes, those will go into the different positions in the sequencer. So let's try something pretty basic, riffing off the key of C minor. We've got eight notes in here. We'll notice that this is flashing here, which means this is the last step entered. We're going to keep it pretty simple. You can do a lot more in entering a pattern, but we'll start with this. I can exit the sequence record mode by hitting run stop again, and then I can run it back and check it out. 
one thing to note right away is as the sequence is running, when you're in keyboard mode, you can transpose it by hitting a key. So this works really well by transposing up like a fourth or a fifth, which gives you, you know, things that music theory type people will know works well with the original key. So that can work really well in a performance setting. We can also go in and edit individual steps by holding down shift and then pressing a given step. So let's edit step four. Now it's flashing and we know that we can edit it. I can go in and select a new note. Let's say let's go an octave up and let's hit an E flat. We hear how that is now there and we can try out a different note. So this is one of the best things about the Mother 32 sequencer. We can actually go in and completely change and edit the sequence on the fly. So I'll, I'll select the next step in the pattern and we'll add a little bit of a cadence here. So this is getting a little bit more interesting. Now let's go ahead and work with this sound a little bit to show what we can do with the sound design capabilities of the two synthesizers. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by routing the, eh, let's take the VCF output of the workstat and run that into the external audio input of the Mother 32. This external audio input right here is the best place to inject sound into the Mother 32 voice I have found. And so now what we're going to do is press run stop and hear what happens. Notice it's the same, but as I change the mix knob right here, we're now introduced to the work stop voice. We hear it's almost silent. That's because the VCF is turned all the way down here. So let's turn that up. turn the resonance down, and adjust the gain slightly. One thing about these two sequencer synthesizers is they have different gain staging. So the Mother 32 runs typical Euro rack 5 volts to negative 5 volts, which means that the signal is louder than the signal coming out of the work stop. But we can totally compensate by that by just having the mix knob adjusted accordingly. So we now hear the mix of the oscillator from the work stop with the oscillator from the Mother 32. We can add a little bit of resonance from the filter on the work stop to get a sort of different timbre. We notice that changing the frequency knob on the work stop changes the pitch of that oscillator. We're also hearing the action of the Mother 32 filter and VCA. To get rid of those, we can flip the VCA to on. So this is really what uh, you're hearing before the VCA shapes the amplitude of the sound. And then we can open up the filter to really hear. So this is more or less the raw sound of the work stop. We hear the resonant ladder filter. And this is going to be a great tool. But notice how this pitch is fixed. How can we get around that? Well, the Mother 32 offers this keyboard out jack, which is going to give us the control voltages outputted by the sequencer. The workstop offers a VCO exponential FM in, which is going to be basically a one volt octave jack, meaning that the oscillator will respond to the voltages from the sequencer in a typical chromatic note by note fashion. So let's give that a try and let's hear what happens. All of a sudden, this is the work stop and we hear that it's mirroring the sequence played back by the Mother 32 oscillator. Now we're going to tune these up to get a nice unison. Oh, appears I uh, might have done that with my ear already, but just to give you an idea here, this is changing the pitch of the work stop voice. So we can get kind of like intervals. And here we have pretty much like an octave above. 
So now we have this lovely, thicker, detuned kind of sound that people associate with analog synthesizers. And already we've seen how we can get new sonic possibilities out of the Workstar and the Mother 32 that weren't available with the Mother 32 on its own. And we also see how we can patch between these instruments. Now, one thing that I really like to do with a synthesizer sound is have the filter cutoff track the notes that are being played on the keyboard. I think that gives like a more dynamic, interesting sound. However, we'll see that our keyboard jack is already being used to control the pitch of the workstop oscillator. No problem, we can take advantage of the molt section on the Mother 32. So our pitch is going to disappear on the workstop as I take this away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the keyboard output and I'm going to patch that around into the molt input. On the Mother 32, you'll notice that the molts, uh, that the uh, jacks which are outputs have a bolded sort of uh, background around them and the inputs are just text on the black background. So the molt basically doubles a the signal. There are different ways of doing that, but an active molt like this is a great way to do it and not lose lose any fidelity in the signal, which is important for something like the output of a, sequence, uh, of a sequencer, which is really precise voltage levels. So then I'm going to put this into the molt jack, and we hear that those pitches come back. Hooray. I'm also going to take the other molt output, and I'm going to run that into the cutoff input on the Mother 32. So here we're patching the Mother 32 into itself. Listen closely to that filter. We can really hear that when we turn the resonance up. Compare that with this. Hear how that resonance is just, the filter cutoff is fixed in one place more or less. This gives us a nice, really dynamic sort of sound. So now, let's see some of the things that we can accomplish in a different mode for the sequencer, which is the step mode. So this is getting back into using the sequencer to compose a little bit. If we hold down shift and press the right arrow key, we'll be able to go into a whole different mode where you see there's an LED underneath every step. What we can do now, which I find extremely useful, is mute certain steps. So let's kind of mute this into like a simple clave pattern. So notice that we're not running 16th notes anymore, rather the envelope is only firing when the LED is lit underneath the step. So this is really useful as it allows us to do things like create more complex rhythms from a basic pattern. So, so that's like one of my favorite ways of using this. Um, just for demo purposes now, let's look at how we start actually recording audio in from the synth and creating the composition in Ableton. So we're going to start with a 16th note pattern. So now it's all running again. and we're gonna turn the VCA back on so that we can really articulate this sound. Now, we're gonna stop the sequencer. Now we're gonna turn our attention to Ableton and get everything set up so that we can essentially create a multi-track loop that's all going to be synced with the Mother 32 sequencer as described before. So we're going to create a number of different audio channel strips that are all set up to receive audio from the Mother 32 and then we can just paint in clips as we go to make it nice and quick and streamlined. So looking at this clip right here, at this uh, strip I should say, we can see that we have audio routed in from our interface channel one. That corresponds to the fact that we have audio routed from the quarter inch output of the Mother 32 to channel one on the K-Mix. So now what we're going to do is create a number of these so that I can paint in my clips as I go by duplicating the tracks. We're gonna make more than I need. And then we're going to basically be set to go on this. So the other thing we've done is we've set up Ableton so that when we press play, it starts spitting out MIDI clock via this cable to the Mother 32. Okay, so if everything is set up correctly, then when we go ahead and press play in Ableton, you'll notice that the Mother 32 is running. 
exactly in time with Ableton's click track. However, you'll notice that right now the resolution of our sequence is eighth notes. I personally prefer to use uh, 16th notes. Uh, we can adjust that to whatever value we want with this tempo knob as the sequencer is running. So if we were watching closely, we saw that these LEDs were lit up all the way to seven. That indicates that this is going in the second fastest resolution, which is 16th notes. If you really want to sort of go light speed, you can do 30 second notes like that. I like to stay with uh, 16th notes. Now, this doesn't guarantee that the first step on the sequencer is going to be landing exactly on the downbeat in Ableton because of the way the sequencer and the MIDI clock talk to each other. However, my trick for that is to hold down this reset button, stop the clock in Ableton, and then go back to the beginning, and then press play. Now we see that our sequence is coming around to beat one on the downbeat, which is going to just make everything so much easier for us going forward. So let's try to get some audio into Ableton and kind of move along with some different sound examples. But at the same time, you know, we can make a more interesting sort of lead synth sound than this. And uh, let's look at a way to do so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the VCO output from the work stat, and that's going to give me this saw wave with a half duty cycle, which is pretty much a triangle wave. And I'm going to plug that into this VCO mod input right here on the Mother 32. We're going to take the click off so that it's not bothering us and you'll notice that the VCO mod amount adjustment doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's because there's this handy feature where this knob right here will control the amount of modulation that is applied via this jack right here. So we'll make sure that this mod source is flipped into EG slash VCO mod and then we'll go ahead and turn this up and listen to what that does to our main Mother 32 oscillator. It seems like the pitch is shifting slightly. And we're also getting a more complex timbre. That's because we're actually performing FM synthesis right now. A uh, little different than what you'd find on, you know, a classic digital FM synth. We're just using two oscillators and they've got, you know, somewhat, uh, you know, non sine wave wave shapes. But we can still kind of dial this in. Now all of a sudden we have a much brighter sound that to me is a little bit more timbrely interesting and uh, you'll notice that I really had to dial that in so that's sort of a general kind of like example of how one would use analog synthesizers where small changes in the parameters like have huge effects on the actual sort of musicality of the tone. Um, so now we'll make sure this is actually in tune. There we go. And we'll get that FM tone blended in with the filtered tone from the VCF here. Um, and then, you know, I actually want to go ahead and apply a little motion on the VCF here of the work stat. So what I'll do is I'll plug VCF CV in to the envelope generator output on the Mother 32. Now, if we just go straight to only the work stat, we'll notice that we're getting that zappy movement of the filter being modulated by the envelope generator. But we have no control over how much of that is applied. Fortunately, there's a really handy little section of the Mother 32, this VC mix knob, which can work to attenuate a signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale the size of the envelope that's applied to that, and we're going to be able to get a lot more control. So we'll have the VC mix output going into the VCF CV in, and then we're going to plug the envelope generator output into mix two right here. And this is going to give us attenuation over the amount of envelope modulation on our sound. So then we're going to kind of dial that in. Get a nice kind of resonant core to this sound and then let the filter on the Mother 32 really kind of shape the timbre of the tone. And now we notice we can kind of play the AD envelope in a really sort of musical fashion. So uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and track something into Ableton. So what I'll do here is I'll arm my first channel to record, and then I'll go ahead and record a clip. E4. 
and here we see our audio going in. And now we'll stop the clip recording. What you'll notice is that I did a couple little tweaks to the parameters and we'll find that those are actually now printed into Ableton. So here's the magic of this whole setup. I'm going to go ahead and now trigger that clip to play. And now I'm going to silence the Mother 32. And we'll hear that our sequence has now been printed into Ableton. And this will free us to overdub in another part. So um, just to make things simple, I'm going to go ahead and stop the sequencer now and start it fresh. But you could do this all on the fly without stopping the sequencer. Let's see if we can do that a little later. All right, so now let's introduce another sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the sequencer to the beginning. Quick and easy way to do that. Run it. Stop it and go like this. Couldn't hear what I was doing because it was silence. But now we'll start from the first step and we'll run Ableton back to the beginning and we'll go ahead and start up the clock on Ableton. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and do another take of that sequence just for fun. Tweet this one a little more. Now, when we're mixing this down later, we'll have some options. So, moving on, let's kind of work with a different sound here and see what we can do. So, one other nifty thing about this right here is that our resolution, I believe, was back to eighth notes. So this actually is a slightly different sequence, and they sound kind of cool in harmony with each other. We'll use that all later, but we're going to go ahead and reset our resolution here to 16th notes, and then reset the sequencer, stop Ableton, and go ahead with crafting another sound. I'm going to show you how to do something of a hi-hat sound. So this time, instead of using the oscillator from the workstat as our external input, we are going to take advantage of the noise. And so I'll remove this plug from the external audio jack, and that will allow the noise to go through to the filter. We're also going to flip the filter into high-pass mode, which is going to generally help us with shaping a hi-hat. So there's a lot more noise in something like a cymbal. Uh, it's a mixture of kind of noise and uh, sort of inharmonic uh, resonances that come from, you know, striking a piece of metal. Um, and so what we're going to do is just kind of mess around with this and try to dial in something that works for the purposes. So now let's go ahead and run it back here. Aha, there we go. I'll tell you, it, You'll find that a sound like this in practice can be a little bit vanilla. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this simple filtered envelopes noise and we're going to try to make something more interesting with it. But first we're going to show off something really cool about editing in step mode. So in step mode, if I hit shift and if I select a step, I can add an accent like so. So we hear that accent come in. Pretty nifty, right? So we can put that in different places. I'll turn it off on the first step. Uh, let's try doing this something like a typical open hi-hat pattern, because uh, you know it kind of sounded like that. So we'll hit that on the off beats. Uh, so that'll be three and seven in our sequence right here. So we'll select step three, and we'll put an accent on there. And then we'll put an accent on seven. So now that kind of sounds just like a quarter note beat, but if we put a kick drum pattern in, you'd get a nice syncopation. So we hear how adding an accent really changes the sound. Um, and it's one of the best things about this sequencer. It makes it really, really, really useful. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to mess with this noise a little bit to get it to be... already pretty nice as far as our dynamics, but let's see if we can kind of adjust the timbre of the noise. One thing that I really enjoy doing with this is taking the noise output 
from the Mother 32, running it into the VCF audio input, and then mixing it with the VCO from the workstat, and then running that back out and around into the external audio input, which we've just done. And now let's see what we can do here. Notice everything seems silent all of a sudden, and you might wonder why that is. Well, if we think about our signal flow here, the noise is going through a low-pass filter here, which is basically cutting out the high frequencies we're going to want to use for our hi-hat. So as this comes back in, we'll notice the oscillator, which we'll kind of take out of the picture. Let's try to really show off the noise here. So let's see here. Let's see how I'm in. And here we get something that's a little squelchier, squeakier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to really kind of FM the living daylights out of this VCO to make it as inharmonic as possible. So in order to do that, we'll actually use the built-in functionality of the workstat, where you can choose the LFO as a modulation source with this switch, vary the amount, and make sure it's modulating the frequency. And then we'll put this at a pulse wave, because that tends to work pretty well for, for hi-hat kind of stuff. And then we can change the LFO rate to try and change the sound around. Just for fun, I'm also going to go ahead and introduce a little something that uh, we like to call cross-modulation, which is where the oscillator, which is being FM'd over here, is also FMing the VCO on the work dot. Now, if that sounds confusing, basically to make it simple, what you get is something that can be a little bit hard to tame, but can make some really interesting complex uh, timbres. Uh, so we will go ahead and grab the triangle output from the VCO. Um, with the saw here. And this is all going to kind of just serve to make the bread and butter of our hi-hat sound a little bit more complicated. We're going to get rid of some of that resonance here. And then eh, I'm going to jump that pattern a little bit to try to, uh, you know, make something that's a little bit more syncopated here. Just per my own personal taste. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn the accent off on seven and I'm gonna put it on six instead. Kind of jump that second beat. Um, now, we can do various. Things to kind of tame this. Now, mind you, this isn't the prettiest, swishiest, cleanest hi-hat you've ever heard. You can get that on here, but this is just an example of how we can apply different things like cross-modulation to get, you know, sort of more out there timbres that, you know, aren't exactly like an 808, but give you something unique and interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recall that the keyboard is modulating the filter uh, cutoff, and so I'm going to put the keyboard up a couple octaves to really push that cutoff up into the upper frequencies to make this, you know, more of a high frequency hi hat ping. So go to keyboard mode, bump up a couple octaves, transpose. Cool, there we go. That's what I was going for. Awesome. So now I'm going to print this. And as before, I started my clip. I can't help but tweak knobs when a sequencer is running. Weird kind of snare sort of thing. Probably won't use that. But yeah, we have it for fun. Okay, great. Let's save that. And what do you know? We made ourselves an interesting little hi-hat. I'm going to make this just a simple 8-bar pattern and, uh, you know, just to keep it a little bit simpler. And then run that clip. Sound some other 32. And what do you know? We've got ourselves a little bit of a hi-hat pattern here. So already we can see you can get a lot of different sounds out of this thing. So let's think about a kick drum or other drum sounds to really kind of round out our sound palette here. 
So now, before we move on to the kick sound, I want to show off one other really cool thing about the sequencer here, which is the ability to do either programmed or live on the fly ratchets, sort of like a flam effect uh, that's transmitted via the gate, and so that's going to trigger our envelope. It works particularly well with hi-hat sounds like this. Great, this is the hi-hat pattern we were used to before. Check out what happens when I press shift and mess with the glide knob. So that works really well just on the fly, and we could theoretically just grab a quick take here with the flams in it. Cool. Get some little kind of accents in there. We're going to make it real quick, just like a little three bar bit there. And then we'll save that for later. Another thing that we can actually do is program those into the pattern. So like, let's say we want that to flam back around to the downbeat. What we'll do is we'll put that on step eight. So bopping over here into step mode, we'll go ahead and select step eight like that. And then I believe what we'll do here is we'll hold down shift and we'll set a ratchet amount here. So you have different numbers of repetitions that will happen during that set. I'll go ahead and put it, uh, you know, different ones to try. We'll start with the fastest ratchet, the most repetitions. Now, let's hear what happens when I bop out of record mode and then just, we hear how that runs every time. So now we'll do a bit slower of a ratchet on this beat right here, just uh, for kicks. And so we'll select this, hold down shift, and cool, cool, cool. So now let's kind of dive into a bit more of like a sound design session and hold off on the sequencing for a moment. So we're going to see if we can turn the hi-hat sound into more of a kick drum tone. So our basic motivation here is going to be that, you know, a la a famous kick like the 808 sound, uh, you know, a kick drum can be pretty well modeled with something of like a dive bombing sine wave where basically an envelope fires that up to a higher frequency to emulate kind of like like the beater of the actual, you know, beater striking the kick drum head and then bottoms out into a sort of nice resonance. Uh, and so that's going to be much different than this high passed VCF. And so what I'm going to do generally is basically set all of my oscillators, if possible, to kind of have that sort of like envelope shaped frequency motion and then run some resonance over the top of that with a filter that's doing the same thing and use all that to get a nice strong sort of tone that gives us that kind of like impact response. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip to low pass mode for my filter. And I'm going to kind of dial that back. I also had it at an inverse switch on the VCF as far as the envelope motion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have that be positive going. So we then turn the resonance up and we really hear the resonance of the filter. We hear that zappy sort of squelch. And as that gets tamed, there we go. We're starting to get into kick drum territory. So that'll be our general technique. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of shape what we're feeding into that kick drum even more so that we can get a nice, powerful, full sound. Uh, so opening the filter back up and turning the resonance down so I can hear what's going into the filter, we're going to first look at what's happening on the work stop. So Right here you hear that the, our oscillator is fixed. What we're going to do is instead of doing the frequency modulation like before, we're going to remove the cross modulation patch and we are going to instead work with the uh, FM inputs as well as the VCF inputs and we are going to actually gang together the inputs here for the VCF and the VCO linear FM in using a handy dandy hopscotch cable from HOSA, which is basically going to give me one input that goes to two destinations. So I will grab my attenuated envelope output and I will put that in here. So now 
when we fire the gate here, what we're going to get is we're going to get movement of the VCO pitch as well as the frequency cutoff. So we hear we made our own kind of mini little kick drum on the work stop. We'll open that up a little bit more to really have a and we can kind of dial in a pitch with the oscillator right here. You know, it's already sounding a bit like a bass, so in case you're wondering how to get a nice sort of chunky bass sound out of here, there you go. So we'll kind of get this in a zone. And then we'll go ahead and mix in a little bit of the same kind of idea with the oscillator on the Mother 32. So. Flip over to that just to hear it. And we've already set it up so that since I pulled the VCO mod jack out, I'm going to then be able to control the amount of envelope that's routed to the frequency input of the VCO with this knob right here. So we're going to get that to kind of do a similar sort of dive bombing thing. And we hear that right here. So this is going to be a nice kind of central impact of our sound. Now, what's really going to make the difference for us is when we start shaping that with the filter on the Mother 32. So I turn the cutoff down to give us room to bump that open, and I'm cranking the resonance. And if we settle that into kind of the central impact, we get a really nice kind of like bongo-like sort of tone and we can dial that in with our various parameters here. And it actually tracks pitch pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do now is initialize a new sequence here. So if we forgot, that command is reset shift pattern bank. So Goodbye, our other sequence is now gone, and I'm going to do a nifty way of gate sequencing on here, which is to pop over to step mode, and then we're going to go to the 9 to 16 section right here, and we're going to put our last step on the 16th step of the pattern. Boom, the 16, and pop through, and now we've got a pattern. So we're going to initiate the pattern again, leaving Ableton out of the picture just for the sake of clarity. and we've got something of a kick drum running here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sequence kind of like the beater. Uh, this is something I'll do when I'm working in the box. I'll have like different layers to make up a kick drum sound. So we're not going to worry about emulating like the big nice booming 808 or even much of the low end of the kick. This is just going to be our impact that really knocks through the tops of speakers or laptop speakers or what have you. Make that nice and punchy. Sounded good. Uh, so now I'm going to reset this. Stop it. I'm going to go ahead and punch in a recording of this right away because I know I pretty much have what I want. So, so here we're recording in our little beater. I'm going to keep it pretty static here. Now while we're still running this, I'm going to cue it back up. So I want to be able to hear this. I'm going to add the bottom of the kick drum now. Get a little gain to this so I can really hear it kind of smack through. So those of you with some headphones now should start to hear a bit of a thump in the low end. Honestly, pretty, pretty, pretty decent sounding little, uh, you know, thumping, thumping 808 here. Uh, and what I can do here is I can actually change the pitch of these individual steps. So let me try some different stuff out. So we'll kind of, you know, do a little thing where I ease it down. Do 
big old octave jump here because that's fun. And we hear how we can basically just create a pattern here. nice actually skip down from below and let's stomp this this one I kind of like to get some extra articulation too we see this coming in it's a lot like an 808 Trying a couple different variations here. Keep in mind, you probably won't hear much here unless you have headphones or subwoofer going, but this is an important frequency range. Sometimes I like to push the attack out to give the beater a little bit more room to exist, but you can also do that with an EQ. give us some stuff to work with and all of a sudden we're starting to get a more full-fledged composition put together so let's step back into sound design mode a little bit and try to turn this kick drum sound into something more reminiscent of a snare a snare drum poses an interesting challenge to the synthesis because it combines a couple different sorts of sounds. Uh, you have the you know, kick drum-like sound of the stick hitting the membrane, uh, the head of the drum, and then you also have the sound of the rattle, which is going to be a little bit more like the white noise that we used on the hi-hat. So that's going to call for a different sort of signal routing here. So let's look at uh, some different ways that we can use these familiar tools here. Uh, really get ourselves in the modular mindset. So we've got my kick drum sound, right? Same as before. Um, and so let's think about how we can use some of the things we had going and add some new stuff to get a snare drum. So first I'll start by opening up my filter just to hear what this would sound like with a little more high frequency content. And it's interesting, but you know, in a pinch, this might work. Uh, for a snare drum, but it's not really my favorite. Um, I found that I get much better results in something like the high pass mode. Giving a little bit more like that. Um, however, at the same time, um, I know I can get a better sounding thing than this. I mean, this is nice and crisp, but it's a little bit white noisy for my taste here. So. You know, this could work in a pinch, no problem, and that was just a matter of changing our filter cutoff and changing the type of the filter and the direction of the modulation. But at the same time, um, let's try using this VC mix section in a different way. So what I'm going to do here, actually, is I'm going to take the noise output of the uh, Mother 32, and I'm going to put that into mix one. Now I'm going to take the envelope out of mix two, and instead I'm going to do something different with the envelope. I'm going to use another useful type of cable, a tip-top stack cable. Um, uh, these are just really fantastic tools, and I am going to go from the envelope generator to the VCA input on the work stats. So we're also going to be introducing a different part of the whole uh, work stat, which is the VCA that we haven't really touched on yet. Um, so, you know, just to get the same thing set up as before, where I have the envelope going to my VCF and my VCO on the work stat, I'm going to now use this stack cable 
to make a connection. So in case you got confused here, what's happening is the envelope generator is going out, it's going to the stack cable, and the stack cable is taking it to the VCA CV in. The stack cable also gives you a jack on the back which molts the signal to another cable that's going into my, um, my red hopscotch cable here, and that's going to the uh, VCF CV in and the VCO uh, CV in as before. So uh, what we've done here is we've basically given ourselves a shaped attack on the VCA, and so we're going to take the output from the back using a quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter jack, and we're going to put that into mix two. So basically that's going to give us a fully shaped tone, uh, which we can check out uh, by going over here and then triggering some stuff up. So we're going to kind of try to get this up and up and running here um, and uh, let's see so we're gonna dial in kind of like the smack of our snare drum so to speak There we go, that's a little synthetic, but we'll be able to make that work. We hear the noise, and, and so now we combine those two, and we get something like the rattle and the membrane of the drum. What we're gonna do to make this even more interesting is we're actually going to take the LFO output from the work stat, and we're gonna put it into the VC mix control. This is gonna do something called amplitude modification, or AM, to both of the signals that are going to the VC mix. And that's going to add some strange sounding metallic overtones that we'll then try to dial in and get just right. So. I think this will be good enough to use for a snare drum. So let's go ahead and try to sequence this up and uh, get it in motion and, uh, and uh, see what we can do with this here. So I'm gonna initialize my sequence uh, just because you know I find that to be a good way to start. And I'm gonna do a longer pattern here. That's more like it as far as the timing. And here we are, this should be what I was going after. Right, so we hear. So we can get kind of different fills coming around. There we go. Kind of what I was going for. Yeah, I'm gonna tame our loop a little bit. Here we're adding a little bit of the Mother 32. There we go. And now we can stamp it. Kind of adjusting settings to get something I know I'm gonna really like. Careful, I'm clipping my interface there. I'll turn my level down.
Cool. So thus far, we've pretty much focused on dialing in a groove with some semi-traditional sounds. Uh, now I'm going to try to add in something of like a counterpoint, a lead, and um, I'm going to go a little nuts with like modulation and trying to get a cool sort of evolving sound. Uh, it's worth noting right now that there are many different ways of using a Eurorack system, and this really only touches on kind of one of those where we're sequencing it and then doing takes. If you have a more complicated complex system, you can have a multi-tambral patch where all of the sequencing and mixing and sound design is done all within the system. So keep in mind there's a whole lot more that you can do with something like this. I just figured this would be an approachable way to look at what we're doing. So what we're going to do now is initialize the sequence, scratch what we've done before, and uh, you know, kind of experiment with like playing in a lead line that works, sequencing that, and then going nuts. So without further ado, let's see here. I'm going to run the beat so I can kind of hear what I'm working with and I'm going to stop this sequence from running and let's see C minor yeah that could kind of work let's see here let me try this so I'm going to pop out of that mode so I can actually sequence it go into here and keep in mind as I'm doing this I'm banging in the steps one after another so if something is going to be tied together what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a 16th note for each of you know uh, the sort of tied 16th notes that would make up that note length and then I'll adjust the gate length. So, so let me show you what I'm talking about. I want to start with a dotted eighth note so I'm going to enter in my first pitch and I'm going to take my gate length knob and I'm going to turn it so that it's at eight. That means that this is tied all the way through to the next beat. So then I'm going to go ahead and do the same note for the next one. Do the same thing. And what we've done right there is we've effectively created a dotted eighth note. Uh, now, let's see if I recall correctly, my next note in that sequence was this right here. And I had two of those. So we're going to tie these all together. This is going to be pretty legato, actually. Um, and then two of these, two of these, one of those, actually. Those of you keeping score at home will notice that this is turning out a little different than before, but we can always edit that. Let's check it out and see what we got. So, I got it for the first part. Let's just start with that first little bit, and we might edit it in later, so. Nice, okay, cool. Let's add some glides in here. Um, what I can do to add a glide to a particular step is I can select the step a la before with the shift and key thing, and then hit the glide. And I'll want to do that at a note change, actually. So what I just did there probably didn't make a difference because this is all one note. But check this out. There we go. Try another one in here. There we are. And then keep in mind, in step mode, I can also mute steps. Cool. That'll be enough to work with for now. So let's get that running with the rest of our pattern and then kind of dial in the sound. We are going to stop it. We've got it reset and... Oh, looks like it's on eighth notes, but works pretty well. Let's check it out here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of freak the sound a little bit and then try to kind of like uh, just notate what I'm doing. So start by turning the filter cutoff down a little bit. 
I'm going to do something now with the LFOs that's a pretty interesting trick. So there is this jack over here that's currently somewhat hidden with patch cables. It's the assignable output jack. It can do a number of different functions. You choose those by going reset, shift, set end, and eight. And what you'll see here is that this LED right here is lit up at a certain position. And this gives you what the function is. Right now, it's spitting out a regular stream of triggers that I believe are quarter note divisions of the clock that's running in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that assignable output after I reset this and reset my sequencer here. I'm going to take the assignable output and I'm going to plug it into the LFO FM input. Uh, it's a little bit of a non-traditional way of using the LFO FM input. I'll show you a more traditional way in a second. But I found it almost serves to sync the LFO to a tempo if you kind of set it right. So let's see if I can make that work here. Uh, I'm going to run the sequence again. Now I'm going to do something with that LFO. Um, let's start by applying a little bit of that to our oscillator over here, and let's bring in a second oscillator. So here's our work stop. Got to tune that up a little bit. There's that nice uni, 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 unison there. So we're moving the PWM around with this LFO. Now what we're going to do is one of my favorite tricks, which is to actually send this LFO into the FM input of the other LFO. So we can grab our LFO out right here and then run that into LFO rate right here. And now we'll find that you have some really interesting movement with this LFO. So let's go ahead and use that to kind of mix between the two timbres. So check this out. We're gonna use the LFO triangle out. We're going to use our handy dandy hopscotch cable to gain together the VCF CV in and the CV in for the oscillator. And then let's add some, oh, let's see here. Let's add a little bit of modulation to the VCA on our main synth here. So let's think, how are we gonna do that? Yeah, let's try a little ring modding. cross modulation back in. There we go. This is what we've been going for. Notice I just flicked the sustain off. So now we've got these envelopes.
let's say we're getting bored of this sequence, which I kind of am. Let's go ahead over into step mode and do a little editing. Let's choose this one. Skip up an octave. functionality is somewhat limited, take the gate output of the Mother32 sequencer and modulate the envelope on the workstop here by running into the gate out. Then we can use that as a modulation source, say, on the filter. take that LFO and run it into a slightly different location. We're returning the resonance up and down. Yeah, now we're really starting to get somewhere. This time we're going to take the square wave out of the LFO and put that into the mix CV, so that'll give us more of kind of like a trill effect. up for fun. So that's uh, just one place that you can start with instruments like these. Uh, really the main point I want to make is that anything I'm doing here is really only scratching the surface of what's possible with these devices alone or with other things added to the mix. You know, keep in mind that I'm barely doing anything in Ableton. My use has been super minimal. You have all kinds of room for creative effects, adding other sounds, and mixing what we've done here and arranging that. So definitely uh, think about instruments like these, or specifically this combination, if you're interested in getting into the world of analog synthesis, or if you've wanted to explore ways of moving your compositional process outside of the box and uh, thinking about new ways of writing music. Um, so for great deals on these instruments and many others, be sure to check out our bundles. And if you have any questions or if you want to talk about what you've seen in the video today, give us a call or shoot us an email and we'd be happy to chat.